Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. My favorite pair of socks, which was a prototype for my best worsted socks, has landed in my mending pile because I've worn them so much that the heel is starting to wear a little bit thin and I want to fix that before there's actually a hole in my fabric. I'm going to be repairing that little area of fabric with the duplicate stitch and I thought that would be a great thing to demonstrate. Let's get started. The duplicate stitch works very well when you want to embellish a piece of knit fabric or when you want to mend a piece of knit fabric. It's sort of like embroidery. You don't use any knitting needles to do the duplicate stitch. Instead, you use a yarn needle and a length of yarn. And usually you want your yarn to be the same weight as the fabric that you're stitching onto and also the same fiber content. So it's not a rule, but kind of a guideline. You use that new piece of yarn to trace the path of existing stitches, either back and forth across rows or up and down columns. And when you use the same color of yarn to do the duplicate stitch, that area that you stitch will be virtually invisible. And normally when I'm mending socks, if I have some scrap yarn left in what I knit the sock, I would use the same yarn to mend as I used to knit the fabric, and then my mend would be virtually invisible. If you're using duplicate stitch as more of an embellishment, then you can certainly use a contrasting color and I'm actually going to use a contrasting color today for my mend so that it's a little bit easier for you to see what I'm actually doing. As I'm getting started, I'm going to pop my darning egg into my sock heel. And that does a couple things. One, it provides a nice flat surface for me to work on, but it also makes sure that I don't accidentally stitch through multiple layers. Before I start stitching, I need to identify the area that is actually going to be mended. And you can see my weak spot is right in here. I want my mend to extend beyond this damaged area so that I am not just stitching over these weak stitches, but I'll actually be stitching over some stronger secure stitches all the way around. And that just helps make sure that my mend is going to be very stable and that my yarn is well anchored so that my mend lasts for a long time. As I'm beginning, I'm going to sort of visually identify the path that I want to start on. And I'm going to work back and forth in rows. And I'm going to start probably right about here and work from right to left and then left and right, tracing the rows of stitches back and forth until I've covered up this whole mended area. I'm going to pull through my yarn. Like I said, I'm going to start right about there. Pull the yarn through and I'm going to leave a yarn tail that's long enough to weave in later. And that tail will get woven in on the wrong side, just like you normally would weave in a yarn tail, nothing terribly special. Normally you would leave the handle on your darning egg or your darning mushroom. I'm going to take it off because it makes it a little bit easier for me to manage on camera. And then I'm going to trace across one row of stitches, probably from here to about here. I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see how I'm going to trace the stitches as I work across this row. And as I'm stitching, I just want to make sure that I have an even tension as I'm pulling the yarn through the stitches. That doesn't necessarily mean a tight tension. 
I want the new yarn to lay flat over the old yarn that I'm mending over. So even, not necessarily tight. You just want a nice balance so that those stitches blend right in with the older stitches. So I'll work across this first row. And at a certain point, it's time to, you know, end the row. And I think I've probably gone far enough here and then work back in the other direction. So I'm going to trace back down this last stitch leg and then come right back up under that little bar so that I can go back across the next row. And again, I'm just going to work across and trace the stitches across the next row. And again, I've reached the end of that row, and I feel like I've probably gone far enough to be well into this stable area. So as I'm going to go down, back up around that little bar, and then work across the next row of stitches from the right to the left. One thing you may be wondering as I'm working across, and it might be a little bit hard to see here on camera, is as I'm working these past the first row, is if I'm going under just the new yarn or under both yarns as I'm picking up my stitches. And it's kind of a matter of preference. If possible, if I can see what I'm doing really well, I'm going to go across both yarn or under both yarns, but it's possible that I may just go under one. It kind of just depends on the circumstance. I've reached the point that I'm really getting into these thinner, weaker stitches. So as I'm doing my duplicate stitch across, I'm just going to be very careful as to how I'm pulling my yarn through. Not necessarily about the placement of where, but I just want to make sure that I don't break these thin stitches as I'm mending. So like here, I'm going under two very weak strands right here. So I'm just going to be very careful as I do this to make sure that my needle does not pull those stitches and break them. Once I get past that very highly stressed area that happened right in here, I can kind of breathe a sigh of relief and it gets a little bit easier to continue in my duplicate stitch across maybe just one or two more rows.
I'm at the end of my duplicate stitch mend and all those really weak stitches that were originally right in this area have been reinforced. I did a pretty good job at maintaining my stitch pattern that was on the bottom of the foot and on the heel. And now I just need to pull this yarn tail that's still left out down to the wrong side of my sock. I'll pull the needle through and then I can just weave in that yarn tail just like I normally would weave in any other yarn tail on the wrong side. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use duplicate stitch to mend an area of knit fabric, in this case a sock heel. I know I'm certainly glad that these socks are fixed so that they can get back into my wearing rotation again. If you enjoyed this video, the best way to support this channel is by heading over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and purchasing a pattern. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!